All right. So um, this is uh, <clears throat> this is uh, uh, an altarpiece in uh, St. Mary's Church in Wittenberg. It's called an altarpiece because it's above the altar in front of the church, right? So um, I just wanted to make sure you were tracking, right? Um, just want to make sure who was listening. Um, this altarpiece was uh, painted by Lucas Cronach, the elder, and Lucas Cronach, the younger, um, his son. And uh, Lucas Cronach, if you uh, remember the new Luther movie, if you've seen that, um, Lucas Cronach was enlisted by Luther to illustrate the catechism, for instance, the catechism, that Luther, the small catechism that Luther wrote. Luther, Lucas Cronach uh, illustrated that. Lucas Cronach is regarded as one of probably the greatest Reformation painters uh, of the time, uh, knew Martin Luther, and um, <clears throat> And uh, they interacted quite a bit. Lucas Cranach has a ton of just incredible artwork um, that is so so depicting of um, the gospel and, and, and the law and the gospel and God's word and how it interacts with our lives. What's really interesting is that this painting was commissioned and installed at St. Mary's in Wittenberg in 1547. This is in the middle of a small call of wars. It's a smaller war, we don't really talk about it in comparison to the Thirty Years' War. But uh, St. Mary's was actually kind of uh, gutted, and some of the you know, tower pillars or, and some of the stonework was taken down and used to make cannons for the war effort. So in the midst of this, this painting was installed. Is it frivolous? No, it's, it's important, because it, it sends a message. We'll talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Um, Luther was always very big on artwork in the church. Never wanted to remove that. Uh, Calvin and Zwingli, some of the other reformers, um, wanted to shed everything that was Roman Catholic, and that included artwork and symbols and all kinds of things like that. That's why you see a lot of a lot of Christian churches today um, that have no altar, no crosses, no right, no artwork, no stained glass, nothing, nothing that might um, might uh, be a stumbling block for people. Luther saw artwork very differently. That's that's called. Um, iconoclasm um, that uh, you get rid of artwork and um, there's a there's a pretty uh, cool quote um, Calvin and Zwingli had no problems with artwork in books um, and so Luther has this quote um, that says something like um, uh, it's interesting you know that that uh, these other reformers have no problem with uh, pictures in books How, how much better to put those pictures on the wall of the church so that everybody can see them and ponder them, right? Why, why wouldn't you have uh, the story of creation uh, painted on your wall, uh, the story of Noah painted on your wall? Uh, it's kind of a, it's kind of an interesting thing. So Luther, Luther was never, never a get rid of uh, symbolism and artwork. Very important in the lives of God's people to be able to ponder, um, to be able to ponder God's word through. Other media. Right? That's really that's really the idea of uh, paintings and stained glass and artwork and all of that. It's to be able to ponder God's word through other media. Um, anything else to say on that yet, Richard? Why do why do Catholic churches always have a picture of Jesus being crucified on the cross on the uh, crucifix? And we'd go into a Lutheran church, there are none. Great question. All right, so crosses. Crosses. This is, this is a really weird thing because crucifixes have always been the mark of the church until following World War II. And evangelical churches um, probably have always moved away from crosses. But for some reason, Lutheran churches started moving away from crucifixes all over. So it's a crucifix with Jesus' body is on it, cross if it's not. The evangelical church had kind of done away with crucifixes for a long time. Um, nobody wants to see a dead Jesus on the cross kind of mentality. Lutheran churches started replacing crucifixes with plain crosses also. Um, poor choice, honestly. Is that where we are? Oh, beautiful. All right. Thank you. Um, really, really, Joe, kind of a, uh, to me, a poor choice in the Lutheran church. 
And, and I think it's a choice that we're sort of starting to recover from. Um, part of the way that Lutherans have recovered from it is it's very popular in Lutheran churches to put a risen Jesus on a cross now, or a, or a kingly Jesus, uh, Christus Rex, Christus Christ Rex King. Uh, the Christmas Rex with Jesus, risen Jesus with a crown, or just risen Jesus, um, and that's a nice, that's a nice image. Um, the problem with the problem with uh, crosses um, and not crucifixes, and I'm not you, you see, I'm wearing a cross today, no Jesus on it. Um, that's fine. Uh, Vicar's wear, Vicar was wearing a crucifix, right? Um, so we don't have to do all crucifix all the time, but when there's an absence of crucifix. Kind of, kind of vibe. Uh, uh, I think it's Mormon. Say that again. <laughs> um, I mean, um, it's Mormon, and that's a great. It, point. It's supposed <laughs> to be Mormon. What does Paul say? We preach Christ crucified. We preach Christ crucified. That's the central message of Christianity. And when you remove Jesus from the cross, <coughs> you're, are you? I mean, yeah, okay, we still preach Christ crucified when Jesus is on the cross. But but it becomes a stark reminder of, of what Jesus did, what he went through. An empty cross doesn't depict what Jesus did for me. It's just a cross. The, the, the cross with Jesus on it. I have a really cool cross. It's kind of small. I wear it every uh, Good Friday. It was done by a, my aunt bought it for me in Poland, had a silversmith make it for me. And it's a small silver cross with, with, a, with a Jesus that's just mangled. It's mangled and tortured. and I mean, it's very, like, not... You can tell that it's a body, but not, right? That's, that's what we preach. We preach Christ crucified. So, so crucifixes are a good thing in the church. We've moved away from them because, because uh, people think they're gory, and, and that'll keep people away, and people won't come to our church if we have a gory Jesus on the cross. It's like, ah... No, it's a really important image in the church. It's an important image, and, and it's an image that we should have. We don't have a, we don't have a single crucifix in our church un, until yesterday or Friday, right? Now we have a crucifix <coughs> in the church. Um, it's located right there. It's the only crucifix in our church. The only one. Isn't that crazy? We're Lutherans. We preach Christ crucified. So All right, so this, uh, this, piece, this piece was designed to represent visually look what Luther's taught about God, uh, about how God works and maintains Christian faith. So each of the four scenes depicted uh, a unique way in which the gospel promise is delivered. And can you see them? What's on the far left panel? Baptism. And then middle one is Lord's Supper. And then the right one is harder to see. Well, the right one is not preaching. Um, the right one is actually the office of the keys, and we'll blow that up in a minute. And then the bottom one is uh, right there you have Martin Luther in the pulpit and the congregation. That is the word, preaching the word. All right? Um, this, is, uh, this is a pretty common medieval uh piece of artwork, the three panels make what's called a triptych. A triptych are the three panels. The uh, panel underneath, the fourth panel, is called a predella. I don't, you don't really need to uh, remember that. But, but that fourth panel is the one that's closest to the altar, and, and that's, uh, uh, we'll mention that in, in just a minute. What did I do? I went backwards. Alright, so, baptism. What do you see so, uh, what are some things that you notice in this? And if you're sitting in the back, maybe you don't see it as well, but what are some things that jump out at you in this depiction of baptism? All right, there's a baby being baptized. All right, so infant baptism, uh, front and center uh, in the understanding of God's church, right? And, and that's, how it's, that's how it's always been. There were always there were always a few in the early church that did not um, see infant baptism as the thing to do, but but by and large, most Christians for the history of Christianity has viewed God's gift coming to children. Right? It's a very minority opinion not to baptize infants. Actually, worldwide, 
It's an incredibly minority opinion, and historically it's a very minority opinion until kind of kind of Reformation time, yeah. and, and even a little bit later, 1600s. All right, what else do you see? I don't know if it's important, but who are these folks with their backs turned? Who are the folks with their backs to us? Yeah, um, congregation, I guess. No, 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 the people <laughs> facing us. That's oh, the people the facing us. Yeah, okay, um, I, uh, we do not know everybody that Lucas Cronach <coughs> painted into his paintings. One of the really interesting things about Lucas Cronach is uh, uh, that, that he saw these things as happening in the here and now. And so uh, when we get to the Lord's Supper one, he painted his contemporaries at the table with the disciples. Why? Because the Lord's Supper happens now for God's people. So these are possibly these are possibly people that Lucas Cronach knew. Uh, I was I was saying more this about if there was any importance to them. The yeah. So this one has importance because this one is actually looking right at us. When you get closer to the painting, this face, these eyes are looking at you, and and Cronach, you'll see this in in every one. I think in every one of these. At least in two of the three, or in three of the four, you'll see it. Um, somebody is looking directly at you. Why would somebody be directly looking at you while the baptism is going on? You are there, right? It's inviting you to look at what's happening, right? That's the invitation. The invitation is that you gaze on and ponder what's going on in this. What else is there? Did we get that at all? All right. Oh, next slide, and then I've got more. All right, so here's a close-up. All right, who's baptizing? Philip yeah. Melanchthon, excellent. Did you recognize his portrait from what we're looking at? Yeah, definitely. Uh, if you have a book of Concord, the reader's edition, there's a beautiful no. picture of him in the back. But yeah, that's Philip Melanchthon. Um, what's weird about that? He wasn't a pastor. That's exactly right. He was not a pastor. He was a professor. He taught philosophy and rhetoric. He was not a pastor. So why is he... Baptizing a baby. Why do you think? But anybody can. Anybody can. That's true. But in this context, in the context of a service, it is the pastor's job to baptize. It's his, his office. Yeah, we don't invite anybody up to baptize the church. Yeah. In an emergency situation, anyone can baptize. It's true. Who is Philip Melanchthon? Luther's best friend. Luther's right hand man. Right hand man of the Reformation. What's Cronach doing by, well, this, by the way, is Lucas Cronach the Elder. Lucas Cronach the Elder holding the towel for the baptism, maybe picturing himself as the sponsor of the child. Lucas Cronach is giving a throw out to Melanchthon because Melanchthon was very solid on infant baptism. Is a champion of the church and the kind of infant baptism and defended it strongly in all his writings uh, later. From <laughs> in in fact, he was a fierce opponent to anybody who did not believe in, in infant baptism. He was a fierce opponent. And so Lucas Cronach, I think, is just giving him a shout out to, to his theology, to the theology of Lutheran baptism and the staunch supporter that Melanchthon was of infant baptism. The other interesting figure is this guy right here is Elector John Frederick. The Elector John Frederick is also pictured. And the Bible, guess what verse the Bible is opened up to? John 3.16 is a good guess, except they are doing Mark 16.16. 16, he who believes and is baptized will be <coughs> saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Got it? All right. This picture, the right-hand picture, now can you see a little bit better? What's going on in this? What do you see happening in this picture? He's got keys. This is a depiction of the office of the keys. What is the office of the keys from Luther's small catechism? It is that special authority Christ gave to the church on earth to forgive the sins of the repentant and to withhold forgiveness from the unrepentant as long as they do not repent. 
So who are these two uh, characters in here? You got one who's kneeling, and the key is on his head. And you have one who is being <clears throat> pushed away. And what's up with his hands? His hands are bound. Say that again. Oh, I don't know if there's actually a person there. I, I'm not sure that there's a vision, visage yeah. of a person. This is simply showing the repentant sinner and the unrepentant sinner. And this guy in the center, this guy in the center is not Luther. Portly fellow, he kind of looks like Luther. But it's not Luther. It's actually, what's his name? Johannes Luther Johannes Bugenhagen, who was the pastor at St. Mary's. Actually, Luther's pastor. Now, St. Mary's is the church where Luther preached and taught and whatnot, but Johannes was the, the, the main pastor there. He was Luther's confessor later in life. All right. Well, Lord's Supper, Lord's Supper, what kinds of things do you see here? What do you see here? Familiar images. This would be, who's this with this head on Jesus' bosom? John. This is John. Who is this figure here? This is Judas, and right here is his full money bag. And, and check out his foot. He's on his way out. He's getting ready to leave. Yep. He is getting ready to leave. And... <clears throat> Jesus is feeding him the morsel of bread. Right? As conviction of you are the betrayer. Right? Jesus is actually feeding him uh, the bread of uh, betrayal. Alright. Um, well, let's go here. Right in the center of the picture is the dead lamb. The sacrificed lamb. The lamb that was slain for the Passover meal becomes the lamb of sacrifice, which is Jesus. You'll also notice that uh, other familiar images, right? Jesus is the host of the table. Uh, right there, Andrew uh, pointed out, you've got a guy looking at the audience again. That is Night George. Right? Luther in disguise. Um, receiving a cup from the steward. The steward, we're, we're not totally sure who that is. It, it, yeah, it's, it's either younger version of Cronach the Elder, or it's Hans, Cronach's son who died. I think this painting is the inspiration for people bringing the pastor coffee. That's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen, brother. Amen, brother. And here, here we just have the eyes drawing us into the painting again. Did we get everything? Yeah. All right, quickly, the word. What do you see in the word painting? You see, you see Luther doing what? Preaching Christ crucified because he's pointing to the cross. He's pointing to the cross. He also has what? The word in the scriptures. So this is a really cool painting because it has all three concepts of the word that we use. The word made flesh, the word written, and the word proclaimed. And the congregation, and I'm on site, women, women sitting and standing, um, the congregation is not looking at Luther. They're looking at Christ on the cross, which you can see when you get a little closer to it. A couple of images here. This is Lucas Cronach, the elder. This is his son, Lucas Cronach, the younger, right? Yeah. The younger. Oh, yeah. Lucas Cronach, the younger. This is Katie Luther. And their son Hans. And this 
again, the face of the person inviting you into the painting is Margareta, who died when she was 13. Luther's daughter, who died, is inviting you into the painting. And then what's really, uh, what's really spectacular then is... Oh, I just lost it. Um, what's really cool is then the predella, that fourth panel, closest to the altar, underneath, underneath baptism, the Lord's Supper, and the Office of the Keys, because it all rests on the Word. It all rests on the Word, and front and center is the Word made flesh hanging on the cross. Did we forget anything? Uh, no. <laughs> we went past, but... We went past. But, that's uh, look at so, it. that's a gift to the church. That's a gift to the to beautiful Savior in honor of the 500th anniversary of the Reformation, and you can, if you haven't noticed it, it's hanging in the hallway um, in the stairs. So, you can kind of see it close up down on the landing. You can see it uh, from the railing. You can see it from most of the narthex, or a lot of the narthex. So, 